Hello, folks. Hmm. There we go. <laughs> Searching between different kinds of computer can be kind of hard. I was just trying to copy something and I kept hitting Alt. Uh, <clears throat> or rather, paste something. I kept hitting Alt V instead of uh, Command V, instead of Control V. Ugh, so much stuff. All right, thank you for joining me. It is uh, now uh, four o'clock, and that means and it's Friday, and so that means it is time for live chat stuff. Um, I have a, I have like I don't know, quite a few things I ended up actually getting in Baltimore. I wasn't in or Baltimore in Atlanta, and I wasn't actually planning to, but uh, that's kind of how it worked out. So um, those things will be shown today, plus anything that y'all have to talk about. Hit me up in the chat. Um, also, you'll notice that down here in the bottom uh, corner. Uh, there is a, uh, a volunteer contact. If you're going to be at the Chicago Pin Show, which is the first weekend in May, so that's, uh, what, two weeks away? One, two, two weeks away. Uh, the third through the sixth, I guess, of May. I guess fourth through sixth. Um, if you're able and willing to volunteer at the Pay It Forward table, that's what PIF stands for here. Um, contact at all the hobbies on Slack or Instagram. And uh, she's doing a lot of wrangling for the PIF table and all that kind of jazz. So that is great. Uh, and so if you can help out for a bit, even if it's only like, I need to like man the table for, or I can man the table for an hour or two during the show, that would be great. Um, a lot of times there's like one or two people doing these pay it forward table things. And, um, you know, that's not great. It's better to have somebody there. Uh, who can, you know, say, hey, take a free thing. This is what this table is, and this is what the spirit of the project is, and all that jazz. So, um, you know, if you can help out, goodness, I got something in my eye. If you can help out, um, hit up uh, uh, all the hobbies on Slack or Instagram. There is the plug. You are welcome. Uh, Brian, hey, how's it going? Let me look through the, the highs and how are you? Oh, Brian was first. Hat trick splice. Hey, how's it going? Uh, Bonaparte, uh, can, I can't even, there's too many things, howdy, uh, Vanessa, Brian, again, garage going out, thanks for Ralph, cool, um, uh, Unwan, welcome, Vanessa, again, hey, 10 p.m., huh, yikes, uh, hey, Cameron, hey, Alexander, hey, Rick, hey, Joe, how's it going, and Joe and Joe, Last job I had a Mac with a Mac keyboard, a Windows machine with a Mac keyboard, and a home Linux machine with a Windows keyboard. Yikes, that is a lot of different things. I've actually got a, uh, um, a keyboard here and then a keyboard on the computer like stacked up, and I keep using the wrong one for the wrong machine. I'm not used to having this sort of stuff. Was that an AD? I'm not sure what that means, Phil, but maybe. Uh, oh, was that an ad? Uh, I don't know. We're not selling anything, so I guess not. Uh, oh, goodness. Hey, Matthew, welcome. Uh, Alexander, you're working on the Raleigh show logistics, huh? I didn't know they were going to come to Raleigh. That's cool. That is cool. Scraggles, going to be famous? Come on in. Scraggles out in the hall. She just came inside. Come on, jump up. You've got grass all over your face. Come on. Scraggles, come on, jump up. You know you want to. There we go. An early appearance by a scraggly dog. Look at this grass on this dog's head. And on her dog face. Yeah, there you go. There's some there's some dog face grass. There it is. Hey, GDEP, welcome from Holland at 2200 hours. You solve your keyboard problem with Synergy. It allows us to use one keyboard and mouse for multiple PCs. That does sound cool. Uh, what day am I arriving in Chicago? I will be getting there uh, Thursday, I think, like, I don't know, midday Thursday, something like that, I think. Hey, Urban, welcome. Welcome, welcome. Got to get there for the uh, the Scotch, uh, the Scotch tour on uh, on Thursday night. It's always good times. So, uh, yep, that will be good. Um, <laughs> man, I hope it'll be good. I've got a lot of grading between me and between now and then for me, so I got to get that done. But there it goes. Hello to the neighbor country. Uh, where are you, Vanessa? You said it was ten o'clock there, but um, where are you? Welcome. I don't actually usually use the uh, whiskey or scotch. I think both. I think it's probably both, but I think... Um, yeah, last time there were whiskeys, there were scotches, there was even a couple of bottles of bourbon. Um, and it, was, uh, it was quite... We, we went through quite a few bottles of the boozes. Um, it was much more popular than anybody thought it was going to be, so... Germany or Belgium? Oh, cool. Hi, how you doing? What are you looking at me in the face for? 
She is very warm. She's been out in the sun, like, laying on the patio. We just took a little walk about, uh, I don't know, half an hour ago. She loves a good walk. That is one of her favorite things in life. And uh, it's, it's, since it's such a nice sunny day, as you can see from my window over here, that is incredibly bright. Hi. Get your nose. What are you going to do about it? Hi. Hi. You've been a good girl. Thanks. Uh, David, what did I miss? Every time you show up, David, you're always like, what did I miss? That's hilarious. Um, oh, Germany. Sorry, I didn't show it. I don't know why. Vanessa, your Germany got uh, got censored out of the stream. I don't know why. That's weird. Um, hmm. Good job, YouTube. Anyway. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you haven't missed much of anything yet. Just saying hi. I'm uh, just stumping for volunteers at the Pay It Forward table for Chicago. Um... We'll work out Raleigh when it gets a little bit closer, that kind of stuff. But uh, yeah, I got you. I got your your Germany back in there for you, Vanessa. Yeah, it's a little bit of Chicago talk. New catchphrase, what I miss. All right, that's good. That's good. That's good. I'm sporting the reject Pinetic shirts. Uh, Brad was giving these away by the box load at uh, at the Atlanta Pin Show. He had like I don't know three or four boxes of these suckers that he brought in after the um, the podcast and said, hey. Uh, uh, everybody take shirts. So I got a couple. Uh, but this is a, a nice comfy shirt. I don't know why he didn't like these, but uh, looks good for me, so that's cool too. Your son has to watch too? Alright, I'll allow it. <laughs> I'll allow it. She might have actually only jumped up here, this dog, because I have some cheese sitting over here. I was having a snack before my stream. A cheese snack. You love cheese. I know. Scruggles did not get to go to... Um, uh, to the Atlanta Pin Show, there was much sadness, but Rosie the dog was there, so that was nice. Uh, we found out that there was a uh, fairly steep pet fee at the hotel, and our logistics here just didn't really work out for bringing a dog. I had to leave uh, from after school, and that's like, I don't know, half an hour each way. We've had another hour to the trip down to Atlanta, so we decided to leave her with a dog sitter who has a little girl that Scraggles absolutely loves. She did not miss us at all. She was having such a good time. She's uh, pretty psyched to be home now. What made him rejects? I don't know. He didn't actually say why he didn't like them. Just that this was the first bo um, the first shirt that he bought uh, for the or that he had made, I guess, um, after he quit his job and became a full time pen addict. And uh, he didn't think they were good enough to sell, so he just kind of kept them in a closet or something, I guess. Uh, but they just say. Um, the pen addict, and the bottom says uh, there are worse addictions, right? I think probably like the white background is not maybe opaque enough or something, or the orange isn't the right color. I don't know. Otherwise, these are perfectly fine shirts. So that's cool. Hey, Sandra, welcome, welcome, welcome. Uh, so these are uh, I don't know, it's a pen addict reject shirt, but I'll wear it. Doesn't bother me any. Of course, it is a black shirt, so if Mister Nose decides to show up, it will turn into a black shirt with a lot of white cat hair on it. Because that is what goes on with uh, this house and animals. So, here she's sitting on my lap. You're not usually this much of a lap dog. She's still kind of tired, actually, from her weekend with her friends. Uh, she wasn't pulling nearly as hard as she usually does when we were doing our walk today, and she was totally ready to come home after a bit. Even though it is very nice outside, it's sunny and it says 65. A little bit breezy, but not as windy as it has been. So, uh, beautiful weather. It's supposed to rain all next week, so that's kind of a bummer, but. You know, I'm going to try to get some yard work done. Maybe I'll even squeeze in a little bit more tonight. I don't know. We'll see how it goes. Large and extra large shirts are gone by the time you got back from dinner. Um, I don't know. Audrey got me this one. This is a double XL. Um, I think she got it the next day. But, uh, yeah, that's too bad. They actually had women's shirts, too, in, like, women's sizes. I'll see if I have an extra large. I don't, I don't know. Maybe I can hook you up, Sandra. Michelle here. Hey, Michelle. Welcome. Welcome, welcome. So, all right, um, let's, uh, let's take a look at some of my haul from uh, the Atlanta Pin Show. Do you want to get down? Is that what you're doing? Are you going to sit? Oh my goodness, there's ink on my feet. How did I get ink on my feet? That's not great. I'm a little worried about that. What's going on here? You know what I think happened? <laughs> I, I have ink on my feet, by the way. That's uh, totally a thing that's going on right now. I was re-inking a pen with some... Um, uh, some where is it? Here it is. Uh, this is Organic Studio Ernest Hemingway. I think that's what's on my feet. 
I hope I haven't been tracking it through the house, but I don't see it. When you have these super saturated inks, you get these little crumblies around the edge of the cap where there's just a little bit of, thank you, sweet girl, uh, where there's just a little bit of ink that dries up. Um, and that falls off, and if you get any water on it, it reconstitutes itself in ink very readily. And I think a couple of little chunks must have fallen on my uh, chair mat here on the floor, and then I stepped on them with my feet. Thank you. Yeah, sure, sweet girl. No, not in the mouth. No, we don't kiss in the mouth. No. Um, so, you know. Um, anyway, so this ink did stop up one of my pens. Ernest Hemingway is not quite, I think, as saturated as like nitrogen or uh, Walden Pond, um, but uh, it does seem like it's pretty thick. So we'll see. I uh, I have I have it in a pen that I'm not exactly sure where it is off the top of my head. It's probably behind one of my computers here, which is a Levenger uh, True Writer Select, and those are pretty great. The women's shirts were tiny. Uh, yeah, I'm not I'm not shocked. Maybe that's why I didn't like them. Maybe the sizes were off or something. I always pronounce your handle as Miss Hellerine. <laughs> yep. So I got a bottle of Noodlers. That bottle was so full of Navajo turquoise in your feet. Uh, yeah, you got to be real careful with those. That's uh, Those Noodlers bottles are filled, and that is no joke. Um, so let's take a look at some stuff I got. Um, I did not get this one. This, is a, uh, this was from Baltimore. Um, as far as pens, I got three pens. Audrey actually got a couple of pins too. She might make it home in time to show up on the stream a little bit. We'll see how long I go. I need to get some stuff done, so I won't be here for super long today. But um, first one I got, let's start with the oldest pen. And it comes in this little cute box. It's a cute little Schaefer's box. It's actually in a very nice shape. Uh, it came with the box. This is sitting on uh, Carl. Carl? Yeah, Carl Seidel, I believe is his last name. His table. No scraggles. This is not a pin for you. You don't get to write with it. This is a little Schaefer Cadet in vermilion. It's like new old stock. It's a beautiful little pen. Uh, I actually did check it out to see if it was um, if it was gonna work or if it needed some restoration. Um, these come apart. Oh, there's like little. Looks like there's little tiny teeth marks or something maybe in the, the top of the cap. But I don't. This has never been inked as far as I can tell. It looks brand stinking new. You wanna get down? Yeah, let's get down. There you go. Um, and since we're on stream, I'll give you a little piece of a uh, little piece of cheese for being a good girl. Have a cheese. There. All right. All right. Uh, this is a little Schaefer Cadet. I really like this color. It is a touchdown filler. It's supposed to be just the tip dip. You're supposed to be able to just cover that little bit right there at the very end. This, you can see the little rough plasticky bit there. You're supposed to be able to put it only that deep in the ink and then uh, fill it. It unscrews here. If you haven't seen a touchdown filler. Esterbrook nibs fit in those cadets? Oh, that's cool. I know there are a bunch of different cadet nibs, but I didn't know Esterbrook nibs did. I'll have to stick some Esterbrooks in here. I'm sure you'll have some Esterbrook nibs with you in um, uh, in Chicago, right? Uh, and you pull this guy out, and that pulls a vacuum in the chamber, and you push it down, and then there's a little um, a sack in here that gets compressed. These actually come, ap come apart very nicely. Um, you can see all the parts. Uh, but this one still has... Uh, there we go. So that was a perfectly good uh, sack on it. Everything is super clean. So I'm thinking this was never actually used. So I got to put some ink in this and see how it works, but it seems to hold water just fine. So seems good. Three touchdown fillers, including a cadet. Cool. This is actually my first one. So um, it's, had, it's got an M1 nib, which I had to ask around uh, about. And um, uh, Joel Hamilton's sister, whose name is I'm gonna mess it up. Cheryl or Sharon? One of the two. I want to say Cheryl or I, I want to say Cheryl. I can. I always see her when we talk. But I can't remember her name at the moment. I was asking her what this M1 is about because man, she knows a lot of stuff. And um, said there was a whole series of these M nibs that went like M1 through five, and uh, like a medium if available. Uh, it's not my shirt. It's, I, I don't have a medium. I I think they were all gone. They were just sort of giving them out at the door at the Atlanta Pin Show. Uh, Cheryl. Yeah, good. I did get it right. Um, uh, what the hell was I talking about? Oh, M. So they're M1 through 5, and they're supposed to refer to the flexibility of the nib. She said that even like the M5s, which are supposed to be flexible, are not at all, but I'm not terribly surprised. But Esterbrook nibs fit in here. That's pretty cool. I'll have to check that out. I'm going to try out this nib first, but if that's uh, not one I love, I do have some Esterbrook nibs that are really good. So, Yeah, it is pretty slick, and I got it for a really good price, too, actually. I'm not sure exactly what they go for, but I paid like 35 bucks, so I'm perfectly happy with that price. It seems good to me. Uh, let's see. Printing on the text is uneven, shirt to shirt, and generally too faded. Plus, the main logo is like a rubbery shield. Don't stop me from talking. 
I'm taking one. <laughs> Miguel, were you there? I didn't see you, I don't think. Did I? Oh, I did. I saw you. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, it is like a rubbery shield, I guess, but the printing is uneven, huh? Huh. Interesting. Anyway. Snorkel and an Imperial. Yeah, I, uh, I've i only got this one. I, I do like interesting filling systems, but the less complicated they are, the better for me, so that touchdown is pretty good. Um, we'll see. It didn't suck up a tremendous amount of water when I tried it, but we'll, we'll see how it goes when I actually put ink in it. Not too worried about it. Not too worried. If nothing else, I can resack the thing. It doesn't look like it's particularly difficult, so I can get that done. Um, all right, next pin uh, is this one. This is, and if you've seen my Instagram, which is at Ink Dependence, um, you'll see, uh, hey, happy Friday there, Michael. Hey, Angel, welcome. Uh, this is a Franklin Kristoff 03. And I actually, when I saw this in the tray, had to double check it and I'll actually look at the text. You can see it there. And it says 03, and I was like, oh, it doesn't really look like an 03. There's something off. Let me grab my other 03. It's on the floor because I had to move my pen tray to make room. So this is the regular 03. Well, this is the Anderson Pens Edition 03 that they used to make. They don't make these anymore. Um, this acrylic is all gone, so they can't make these anymore. But they do have a new pen. They have a 45. It's in a very similar acrylic. And it looks cool. Anyway, so I was looking at these two, and um, one of them is quite a lot longer. The uh, regular 03, this one, has got like a finial's length more. And the reason for that is that it would look kind of odd if you did it um, in the... Um, like a clipless 03 with the finial and all this jazz up here. So they just modified the cap a little bit, and I think it looks dope. I'm a big fan of this pen. I'm glad there was one left over. I think I picked this up like end of the day on Saturday or something maybe like that. Uh, but uh, these are really cool. Same price as all the rest. This is Italian ice. I don't know if there's enough sun for you to be able to tell. Maybe. The sun is kind of... I'm trying to turn the sun off. I don't know. Can't really tell, but it does go very purple. And if you check out my Instagram, you'll see this one being very lavender. Um, in some of those pictures. I had them put a black nib on it. I got a SIG because SIGs are currently my favorite grind. This is a medium SIG, so this will be good for all kinds of stuff. It's inked up with Spanish blue, which is a blue that I'd forgotten how much I liked. Uh, there's so many other colors out there. Sometimes it's good to go back to one that you know you like, uh, but it's been a while, so um, those are really good. Matthew, do I know if Franklin Christoph tunes nibs that you buy at a show or just nibs a new pin purchase? I want to get nibs at the Triangle Show. If they don't tune them, I may buy online. Oh, they tune them at the show. If you look at, um, I don't know, Instagram or blog pictures of the Franklin Christoph setup, they uh, I don't have a UV light, Michelle. Sorry, I can't. Um, the only UV light I have is the sun. Uh, but out in sunlight, it glows pretty hard. So uh, anyway, so their setup at shows is... Um, a bunch of leather and ink and paper and then pens and then Jim. And Jim sits there and just sets up nibs all day long. Um, and probably he and Scott and maybe Audrey will be setting up nibs at the Triangle Pin Show. So, yeah, yeah, definitely, uh, definitely they tune them there for sure. And actually they can tune them for your hand. Uh, they just sort of guess when they tune them at the shop. They try to make them work well enough for them. But if you have an odd excuse me, writing angle or something like that, they can't know most of the time. That really glows into the light. You never use Blue Ghost? I never use Blue Ghost. No. Um, so no, I don't, have a, I don't have a UV light. Oh, this is not um, ice in beer. That would be horrible. This is ice in root beer. All right. I'm even more excited. Yeah, it'll be good. Um, hunt me down, Matthew. I'll be there the whole time, probably. I will be there the whole time. Uh, the last pen that I got is this one. And you're like, Mike, didn't you already have an arrow? And I would say, no, I did not have an arrow. I had two other arrows. This is arrow number three. This is the Diplomat arrow in the factory finish. Look at how shiny this aluminum is. You can see a little bit of like machining grooves there and the, the grooves on this thing. Uh, the black clip and ends really pop on this, I think. And um, I, uh, I really love these pens. I saw some at Bird Ozer's table, and uh, the price was good, so I went for it. I got a medium nib on this one. I got an extra fine on my orange arrow, and uh, that is too fine. That extra fine is very, very, very fine, and it's too small for me. Uh, but I stuck a Franklin Kristoff nib in that one, and it works great. So uh, Yovo number six nibs. These are Yovo nibs, but they're made specially for Diplomat, apparently. Not just engraved, but apparently they do something else. I don't know what it is, but they... Um, 
Hillary said they do they're made especially for them. So there might be tiny variances, so maybe not every number six nibble fit in there from Yovo, but it seems like the Franklin Christoph ones do just fine. So uh, you can see this has the I guess you can't see unless you look inside the cap. It's got the black interior, but this is a uh, very nicely closing cap. It's great. I'm a big fan. The blanks that Ralph picked out looked awesome. What did, what blanks did Ralph pick out and for what? What's he doing? I don't know. They actually look like Ricky Cha. That sounds kind of awesome. Ralph Cha. Nice. I like that. Are you making him pens for his nibs or what's the what's the deal? That, by the way, is the Brian Chu that does... Uh, still waiting for my arrow back from Diplomat, huh? That sucks. Diplomat closes with friction, right? No magnets. Um, yeah, it is friction. Uh, but they did actually just change the mechanism. If you look in... Let's see, where is my other one? Oh, here it is. If you look inside the old ones... Let's see if I can get some light in there. Oh, it's really black on camera. Let me grab a flashlight. All right. You can see there is just a small uh, white cap in there, a small white cap liner. And something in there grabs the end of the uh, section, uh, a little detent sort of guy, and that, uh, that closes it. But that one doesn't work as well. It doesn't post as well. It posts on this one because it's matte, but they were having the, uh, the caps would always fall off in the original orange ones because it had this old sort of cap system and it didn't catch very well. You can see it doesn't have doesn't have a good affirmative feeling. It's it's a little bit weak sauce actually. So they re they revamped the fillings or the uh, goodness the cap system, and now if you look inside, well we don't need strobe. Uh, there, it is black all the way in. The whole thing is uh, like a, it's a full liner, full cap liner in there, um, and so now it posts great, no problems there, uh, and it closes kind of soft like you know those like like those soft closed drawers on a like a kitchen cabinet set the new ones where you like try to slam and it goes shh, shh, it's like that if that's how it feels um, so I'll make a little video about that um, extolling the virtues of that soon but um, there's the the quick version but anyway um, I love this pen I've been carrying it all week that one I've actually been carrying both of these all week um, I haven't inked the red one yet but these two are great I'm a big fan like a prayer of soft close you know what I don't know I don't have a prayer um, I, didn't, I don't like them enough to drop 50 bucks on one. That's why I don't have one. So, but I don't know. Maybe. Maybe. Those doors suck when you want to slam doors to be angry. That's true. Should I have putting an Estabrook in a cadet? Nope, not going to fit. Oh, huh. Interesting. I don't, uh, I don't have an Estabrook nib sitting here, so I don't know. I think that swung the arrow for you. Oh, good. Well, I'm glad. 30 bucks on Amazon? Yeah, okay. That's not bad. Maybe I'll get one from Amazon one of these days. Um, but I, I don't know. I don't really love the nibs in those. They're the same nibs that you get in the um, like the Metro and stuff, right? I don't really love them. But they're not bad. 30 bucks seems fine for that pen, for sure. So yeah, those are the pens I got. Audrey got um, a couple of very nice ones. Oh, wait, no, I do have more. I have more. I actually won something, y'all. I never win anything at shows or kind of anywhere else. Uh, but I did win big in the drawing after the live pin edit taping. Um, yeah, I'm the guy who doesn't like pilot nibs. I have bad luck with those friggin' things. Um, it's never it's never good for me, but, you know. Um, I got two Retro 51s. No waiting. Which is kind of awesome. These are a matched set. Uh, both number 110 from the Van S. Pens um, uh, Artist Editions. These are done by Kirk Montgomery. You can see there, you've probably seen these online. I actually haven't opened them, so I'm gonna go ahead and open them on stream. I think that'll be fun. I'm gonna open these guys. Get this plastic off here. Ooh, you get a Lamy 2000 with 18K nib. That's pretty dope. There we go. That's your typical, there's like some paperwork wound up in top of there. There's the nice foam stand guy. And then this is the black and white version of this pen. It's old timey comic strip style. It's got the, uh, it's got a nice Van S80 up there. They've been around for 80 years, it turns out. That's kind of a long time up on top of the V. That looks cool. 
Oh, nice. They've got the uh, the 110 engraved in here. It's an off-color engraving. It's engraved right into the brass or copper or something. That's very nice. Um, there's the little tip there. These are roller balls. I'll probably trade those out with um, ballpoint refills because I like that better. Hey, Emil, welcome. But uh, these are very cool. I was very happy to win these. I hadn't bought them yet, so it was neat to get a, a match set, a number matched set. There we go. Audrey will probably end up with one of these. I'm not sure which one we'll give her. And this is the color printed one. This one actually comes with a little print, which is fun. I think this is the, actually the graphic that's wrapped around the pen itself. We have a blowy up car and a sad looking guy with a woman behind him. Kind of an interesting illustration. Like, it doesn't really mean anything to me, but it does look like fun. Oh, we've got a Van S license plate. I didn't notice that. That's neat. What else do we have on here? Oh, we got Kirk. We got the dude's name here on the car. Those are the kinds of those are the kinds of things I like. Oh. Looks like this might actually be signed. Hmm. I don't know. Maybe not actually signed, but it looks like it's each one has got a little signature, so that's fun. There's right, a little illustration set over here. I want to see what this pen looks like. This one is much more colorful. I actually think I might like the black and white one a little bit better. Maybe Audrey gets the colored one. But there we go. So that's a very nice feeling to it, actually. You can kind of feel the illustration on top of it. Most of the rest of them have sort of a, like a matte sort of feeling. But uh, Van Ness has been hitting it out of the park with these retros. So is Anderson pens with their like Chicago Skyline one that is super pretty. Um, but this is the uh, this is the illustrated kaboom version, the little Van Ness license plate and everything. Yeah, very nice. It's got like the little dots for the fill in on the red there. This is very very vintagey. It's got a nice yellow jewel in the top with the V80. Anyway, so this is these are really the last pens that I got from the from the uh, Atlanta Pen Show. There we go. I haven't used these yet, but they will definitely go in the collection. I have a little bit of a collection going over here. What do I have sitting here? One, two. Um, I've got four over here. I know Audrey's got several more. We've um, between us, we have several of these retro fifty ones. So there we go. All right. Go ahead and put these um, over here, ish. All right. Bam. All right. Man, y'all went silent. You were paying rapt attention, I suppose went silent i also got a bunch of inks um some of these i'm not sure if i want to show this one on the stream i'll show it this way uh, because there is um oddly full frontal nudity on these some of these bottles um this one especially um, it is a person wearing an overcoat a female type person and there are no clothes under that overcoat um, this is uh roar and klingner sketch ink lily which i reviewed a little while ago um these sketch inks are nano pigment inks. It says shake well before use. Is there a, can I see the bottom in there? And sometimes they do like some of the, the nano particles actually fall out of, of particulate. But uh, yeah, yeah, it is sketchy. But these are, uh, this is a good ink. It's kind of this color, which is like a, I'm not gonna be able to catch it because there's too much light behind it. It's kind of a murky, like green brown kind of color. Which apparently I'm real into because that's those are the colors I got pretty much. Um, I I would say David check out reviews of these guys because I really like Lily, but I hear that like the green one it clogged up somebody's uh, did I say nanobots? Well, either way, um, clogged up somebody's pen pretty good. Um, I've got the orange one in here. I've got this orange and an orange pen, and it doesn't seem to flow very well. Let me see how it's working right now. Yeah, it's kind of kind of junk. Um, and it's very, very pale. It's it's barely coming out of the pen. Um, I've been having issues with this one. I might try it in a wetter pen nib or something, but it's not liking this medium that I've got it in here. Um, so I don't know. I think it's going to vary by the ink and maybe buy a specific one and not all of them. Didn't buy it for the label. Definitely not the label. <laughs> well, you know. Uh, you have the Veroni one. Which one is that? I don't know. I don't remember Veroni. Uh, but Lily is very nice. I bought it because I've used it before. Um, also... This is kind of a good amount of ink. This is 50 mils for 12 bucks. So um, not quite noodler's value, but pretty good. Um, so anyway, check out Lily. Oh, sorry. There's the, there's, check out Lily. I don't want to get a mature tag or something. Oh, the pink one. I haven't tried that one yet. Um, 
so yeah, check those out. These are waterproof. Uh, they're supposed to be light fast. Um, but I really like Roaring Klinger inks, so that was, uh, after I started using it, that was what I decided I had to have. Um, I also got, uh, while we're on the, like, weird brown colors, I went for Monteverde's Moonstone. These are only eight bucks. Um, they're smallish bottles. They're, what are these? Uh, 30 mils. Uh, but 30 mils for eight bucks seems like a fair amount. I got these, uh, from Anderson Pens, by the way, these three. Um, and, uh... So I'm kind of psyched about this one. I haven't really seen much of a review on this one. I've only seen, I think, one review of Moonstone. There are so many darn Monteverde inks out there that I am not surprised that people have not gotten them all reviewed. Heck, I've got most of them, and I haven't reviewed but more, two or three of them. So, you know. Talking about ink, I found that a company started making fountain pens here in Brazil. I'll have to try them sometime soon. Yeah, that sounds good, man. Yeah. It's good to have a local fountain pen and ink maker there, Matt. Uh, but yeah, Monteverde ink is one of those ones that's... Uh, um, I think it's under the radar. So yeah, I'm hoping that I'm going to like Moonstone too. I haven't had a chance to put it in a pen yet. Um, I only got back like Monday, no, like late Sunday night, and I've been working pretty hard trying to keep up with my workload at school right now. It's like the very end of the semester, and so that is crunch time. And the last one is, again, in that same vein. I bought all these Manderson pens, um, and they are, uh, they're all the same kind of color profile. This is Robert Oster's Melon Tea, which is... Where's my... I actually do have a, I have a color card for all these actually, now that I'm thinking about it. I didn't do a new one for Lily, so you'll have to look at my blog for that one. This is Melon Tea. Where's my flashlight? There we go. That's Melon Tea, which is like a, a greenish, brownish gray, I guess. I guess it's mostly brown, but it's got definitely hints of green and gray in there. So I'm kind of looking forward to that. Um, I tried a sample of it and I used up most of my samples. So I said, well, I guess I'll just go ahead and get that. Copper Noir is still on the top though. Copper Noir is cool. I've been using that for a bit. Um, this is the Monteverde Moonstone. Let's see if I can make this. Nah, I can't really make it brighter. There's too much light behind me. Sorry, folks. These live video cams are not the best for showing color correctness, but it seems like it's kind of a, not quite a brown, kind of an off brown, like a real dark sepia maybe. I don't know. We'll see how it goes, but that looks cool. Um, oh, I also got a little sample of KWZ's grapefruit. I was talking about needing to try out some of this, and uh, my friend Sarah, the Bijou 3 Owl, um, brought me a little sample of it. So I'll be trying this out soon. I haven't had a chance yet. I just had a chance to make the swab. So um, that's done. So that's not in this color profile. And the last one is definitely outside of it, and that is another KWZ ink. This is uh, Hawaii Blue from Hippo Noto. You'll be able to get this one pretty soon. Stinky KWZ. I don't know, man. Uh, let me smell this um, this grape um, this grapefruit. It does smell a little bit like vanilla. Yeah, I actually like that smell. I think it smells very pleasant. There are some that smell really bad, but I think this like vanilla smell is actually kind of nice. This is the full size bottle that the KWZs come in. I've only got like one or two others. Of the I guess Chicago Blue. That might be the only one. There it is, Hawaii Blue. Let's see if this has the smell. No, they don't all smell like it, but this one does. Oh, shit, Audrey, don't do that when holding a bunch of ink in my hand. Are you out of your mind? Y'all almost saw a horrible catastrophe. I've been like this the whole time. You are right behind my microphone on this image. I can't see you at all. I almost, ink almost went literally everywhere. It would have been a nightmare. <laughs> oh, jeez. Why would you do that? <laughs> oh my god <laughs> wow okay well that's my cardio for today you should come in the door what are you doing lurking back there lurker I want to talk to the animals. Uh, there are animals by the way who are I get them on the darn cam I don't know if I can there we are go back to playing come on there you go that's how our animals play for some reason yeah Anyway, yeah, now I just earned my explicit tag. So, good. Uh, this is what that Hawaii blue looks like. This is what my room almost looked like. I almost changed the whole wall and carpet color of my my office. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> First time you're in a bit of swear. <laughs> I try not to swear too much on the cam, but um, uh, sometimes. <laughs> oh, Audrey's got a pair of pens here. The first is a shark pen. Um... This is a uh, Jin Hao knockoff of the squid pin from uh, Pilot, but it does have a shark on it, and it does have different size nibs. 
Uh, and also, we didn't pay for it, so I'm cool with this particular knockoff. But, oh, uh, I didn't even know it was a knockoff. Really? Yeah. Oh, it's exactly the same, except it's got a shark instead of a squid. A sailor, what? No, not a sailor. The pilot, um... um oh, the Plumix? The Plumix. Eh, that's yeah. not a squid. The Plumix is a squid pen. Yeah. Hmm. I'll show you one in here in a little bit. Huh. A anyway, I know. I've got a bunch of Why them. Why is it a cheap pen? Why would they even bother knocking that out? Because that's what Jin Hao does. They knock off pins, man. That's their jam. Mm -hmm. So anyway, so this fun shark. Audrey wow. sells the piff table and was like, I have to have some. Shark pin works better, much better with a converter than with a cartridge. Really? Now this has got a converter in it, so I guess there we go. I get weird on turns and stuff. It doesn't want to... You get weird on turns? It, it doesn't flow right on turns when I do... Yeah. But, you know, it's a dollar pin, so whatever. Yeah. I don't know what it's inked with. It's either a color verse or a waterman. Okay. Yeah, who knows? She got this from uh, Anna Reiner. Let's see if it's writing. Oh, he writes. Yeah. It seems like it's great. What do you mean? Wait, what turns are you talking about? When I make little squigglies on notes and stuff huh. for thank yous, sometimes when I do a turn, hmm. it just doesn't write. If only you were a nib adjuster and <laughs> grinder and uh, nib smith in training back here. Sharks are cool to give kids. Yep, that's true. I agree. I'm and for like a buck or two, that's cool too. Do what? I'm a kid at heart. You're a kid at heart. Yeah. So we should make a gif of my scared face. Yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing that everywhere. Jeez. Good job, Audrey. I was good I was being job. Very nice. You were not. Yeah. <laughs> Only turn left. Uh, yeah. My new Finn show Cohen says it's Shark Awareness Day. Of course it does. <laughs> be aware of all the sharks in uh, Florida. And this is a pen that I got for Audrey for her birthday. Uh, this is a bit of a surprise. She's been actually looking at this pen for how many shows? A couple. And uh, this is an Omos uh, Ojiva. A nice broad nib. Have you actually put ink in it yet? I have not yet. It's been, I know, I didn't know what, but I didn't want to put it, I didn't have an ink that I wanted to put in it, so I was, I wanted to bring it home. Tisk, tisk. Yeah. Well, we'll put some ink in it for her, but uh, we haven't tried this. Try olivine. Oh, I've got olivine. I've got a bottle of that back here, too. I like it a lot. It's really good. I like it. Hey, Stephanie, welcome. Uh, so, yeah, this is a beautiful yellow Ojiva from Omos. It is Audrey's first Omos. Oh, gee. Oh, gee. Uh, it is a piston filler. Uh, it doesn't have an ink window, which is maybe a problem, but what are you going to do? Um... It'll probably hold enough ink to keep it going for a while, despite this big broad nib on this guy. Yeah. We'll see how broad this broad nib is. Ink it up now. Do it. Uh, after you uh, gave me a fright and almost made me pour ink everywhere, I think I'll uh, chill out for a little bit mm -hmm. before I do that. Goodness. Goodness. Anyway, I picked this up from Jimmy Dolph's table. Uh, so the Omos star hold you more than Audrey. <laughs> well, she didn't sneak up behind you. <laughs> oh, jeez. Nerves of steel, that's what they call me. Nerves of steel. This, uh, out of the way. All right, so those are the inks I got. Mostly murky greens, uh, a bright orange uh, sample, and a bright blue. So, mm. waiting on an Omos to be delivered from Italy. Almost six weeks now, huh? Yikes. Mm. Here are the um, the retros out there. I just took them out of their packages for the first time. Miss Audrey's entrance while walking to your car. So, uh, Sandra says hi. Hi. Yeah, her entrance was she snuck up behind me and whispered, I'm here. Uh, while I was holding an open I, bottle I of ink. An open been, bottle of I'm ink. Here! And then you would have just jumped. You could have like stomped around or I don't know. I don't know. Since so she decided to sound like a ghost. Where do you get an Omos aside from the pen shows? Um. I don't know. They're like kind of harder to find online, actually. Um, uh, you can... Uh, <laughs> hey, Deverman, welcome. Uh, you can find them sometimes in like Chatterley Luxuries has them sometimes. I don't know. They're kind of hard to find. You can find them on eBay, but um, I don't really trust eBay much, so I don't buy much stuff there, so I don't know. You've waited a few months for a package from Italy? Yikes. Get Omos from Oscar when he's at Burt's. That's true. That's a good way to do. eBay has lots of Omos. Yeah. Burton's Inkwell has a lot of them. I don't know if they have them online or not, but um, if they do, it's probably because Oscar put them there. And they're um, they're usually pretty nice. 
Um, let's see, what yeah, else? And Ken Rowe posted a few. I don't know if there were any of them were Fountain Pens on their email list today. Ken Rowe posted a few Omos? Yeah. Yeah, Ken Rowe has that, like, that weird store site they've got now, but I can't remember what it was called. I don't know, I just get the emails and it's a link to it. So I don't think I get emails from them for some reason. How do I get emails and you don't? I don't know. Yeah, I definitely don't get any emails from them. I haven't gotten one today anyway. Huh. I got two today, actually. Ooh, wow, well, look at you. Look at you. I did get, oddly, a YouTube reminder that I am live now. It's weird that YouTube is telling me that I'm live, but whatever. Oh. <laughs> Chilean, mail, Chilean mail is awful. Yeah, I believe it. Oh, yeah, we ship things to them. It's taken months. It's taken months to get things to Chile? Yeah. Yikes. Yikes. Uh, hey, Greg, welcome. eBay for expensive pins makes you nervous. Me too. Uh, Manu from is still selling. Oh, is he? Is Manu still selling them? Manu had a couple of tables worth of spread of Omos. He has some like triple zero um, paragons. I almost bought a big orange paragon. I said you said. I said you should. So I know. Investment. I know. I didn't do it, but what are you gonna do? Daffer man, I guess I got your uh, your reminder. Sorry about that. Uh, he had the Plumix from SBRE Brown. He has a. Special Plumix? I haven't even heard, heard about that. Uh, do I have any comments about the recent Esterbrook acquisition? I mean, good. It definitely is in better hands with uh, Carrie and Ryan from Kenro than it was with, um, uh, what's his name? Um, Rob Rosen. Rosencrantz? Rosen, Rosenberg, I think. I know too many Rosens right now. <laughs> My boss is Rosencrantz. A good friend of mine is Rosenfeld. I think he's a Rosenberg. Uh, but I think uh, I think it's in good hands. I, I really think that they care about you know like the heritage of the brand and making good stuff. So that puts them a, a, a bunch of steps ahead ahead of um, that Rob guy. Uh, let's see. Saw an interview with some expert from his home. Watched his two toddlers walk in, lock the door. Oh, I saw that one too. Yeah, that was pretty good. Speaking of ghosts, is the Franklin Christoph 03 white or gray? Um, it's actually neither. The Franklin Christoph 03 is, uh, this is Italian ice. Now, they do have a white one. A um, yeah, it's a ghost. So, yeah, maybe that's what you're talking about. Yeah, that's the ghost, and that is white. It's not uh, It's not transparent or translucent. It's just a white, it's a white plastic. You can see ink in it, though. Oh, can you? Yeah. yeah, you can see the ink in it. If you eyedropper it or if it's in a converter? More so eyedropper. Okay. So you can see through it a little bit. Uh, let's see... Look at Manu's offerings. Oof. Yikes. Uh, what have you sent there? Oh, yeah. Audrey has sent uh, Franklin Christoph stuff to Chile. She does a lot of the shipping. And what's that, Ad? I really like that princess pen that Manu had as well. He had a princess pen? Yeah. I do not recall. Wait, we looked at it. It was a little one. Some of them had a little tassel on the end. Oh, right, right, right. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. Yep. I remember that one. Yep. It was $450, too. Yeah. It was Really hope that Esterbrook improves under Kenro. Me too, Troy. Um, let's see what else. Used to it to enhance your patience. Yep. Um, yeah, I mean, look, they are. Um, he that guy is at Kenro, but he's not involved in the in the pen stuff anymore, according to a very reliable source that I have. Um, he is there for uh, like patent acquisition reasons or something like that. So, you know, um, I wouldn't worry about that. I think it's okay. Tag me in a picture of Ralph's pen blank on what service, man? Is that in like Instagram or something, perhaps? I don't know. Crack a beer to chill. That's not a bad idea. <laughs> oh, on podcasts. Uh, there it is. You didn't tag me. Oh, adding. Oh, you put it in the title. Yeah, if you put it in the title, it doesn't tag me. That just it just thinks as a title. Oh, that does look ra that does look rad. I uh, I do like that blank. That's gonna look cool, man. It's gonna look cool. What's the weather like here now? I don't know. High 60s-ish and sunny. Yeah. Then you can see from the window. It's supposed to rain all next week, though, so yay. But it is getting it is getting uh, nice and warm now, which is good. I'm in favor of that. Um, I pay more attention to what they come up with. Yep, that's good. Is that the blank the Slack channel? Maybe. I don't know. There's a nose behind you. There's a nose behind me. Oh, he wants to come over here and get all of his fur on my black shirt. 
Oh. That's what he wants. So do we have There's more nose. Team Nose or Team Scrags? Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Uh, hit the channel with whether you are on Team Nose, that is this cat, or uh, Team Scraggles, the dog. We'd like to know. I think that would be fun. I wonder if I can do a... He's really posing right now for you, too. He really is. He's really uh, showing off that nose. It hurts Greg's, too. Hi. Here. You want to jump up again? Jump up. Come on. No? That's cool. You don't have to. Uh, we've got two team noses so far. Yes. Hold on. I will take a tally. Oh, I do love team Scrag, so I I love you both. But nose is OG. He's the OG, so that says something right there. Let's see. Nose. Scrags. I wish I could do a poll in here. That'd be easy. One, two, nose. Team both? I don't know, man. I'll make a team both, but uh, let's see. Team Fluffy? I'm going to go with that's probably both. I got a nose. Oh, Scraggles, you're way in the back. Poor Scrags. Brian says he is, uh, he is Team Scrags. Uh, plus one for Team Fluffy. I think that's cheating. I have a cat licking my hand. Okay. He's back there licking hands. He's a cat that licks hands. Yeah. Scraggles, we need to have you up here to represent for your team. Come on, jump up. Come on. Come on. Jump up here. There we go. There's the Scraggles. There it is. You don't like it? it? Looks not really different from the Umbra? What's that? What are you talking about, Vanessa? I think I missed something. <laughs> Team Scrag's nose? I feel like that's uh, cheating. See. I feel like that's cheating, David, there. Also, don't don't vote more than once, because... Man, I can't uh, can't keep track. Oh, man, Scraggles is coming in now that she's up here on the stream. Oh. Now that she's up here. Team Ads, get out! Team Ads, uh, yeah! Vote twice, get the Russians involved. They're really all about the dogs, since she knows poses too well. Oh, Sandra went for nose. Poor nose. Not poor nose, he got, uh, he got another vote. Hey. Hi, everybody. Vote <laughs> Team Oh, no, thank you. That's me. Yeah, look. There he is, licking a face. There we go. Have each of them do a trick? Uh, I can, Both can do tricks. Yeah, I don't have a good camera angle to have either of them do tricks, actually. Mr. Nose does tricks, too. Our two cats do. Yeah, two of our cats have been trained to do tricks. The other one, I think I think Katie could do tricks. I mean, she's very food motivated. Motive yeah, yeah, you, make her, you give her the chance at a treat, and I think she'll be all over it. But Safari All Black is definitely more... Oh, you're talking about those. Um... Safari All Black is definitely more dark than charcoal. Yeah, I think it is too. Um, pandering to the audience. Yep. yep, that's Mr. Nose. That's how he goes. Sorry, Scrags. You're not really you're not really showing up here. We've got four for Team Nose, three for Team Scrags, a four for both. Uh, I don't know. That's rough. we got 50 people watching right now, so that's uh, that's it's not a great ratio of voters. Most of them are Team Boo Pets. They're Team, team I Don't Like Pets. Team Cat? All right, well, that's another one for Mr. Nose. Nose, you're up to five. Nose is in the lead. I didn't even know. I thought Scraggles would be the runaway, uh, the runaway I think hit. She's not showing up well from your shirt. Here, I'll lean back. No, she, she's like, let me lean down. She's now. a spiffy dog. It says so right on her collar. Yes, it does. I showed them your collar. Now they all know. She went yeah. for a walk today. Oh, we got another, uh, got another Scrags here. Oh yeah, Scrags has had quite the day. Um, the difference isn't worth 20 pounds is there a, or 20 euros there's a um, there's a price difference between the two here they're all the same maybe that's the thing that's overseas or something I don't know I don't know team beer you know, another oh I got another scrag that's good for you I now you're tied with nose I thought you were going to say beard team beard like, that would be scrag that would be that would be right the new umbra is really brown oh oh is umbra what they're calling the new black one is that, I don't even know I don't even know scraggles I can't keep track can't what are you doing yeah yep <laughs> team beer all right team beer <laughs> scraggles you're trying to eat my pen is that what's going on here yeah. she wants to see what i'm writing in uk most of the resellers charge the same for the all black as the other safari yeah that's good they ought to that's uh that's what they're all supposed I to be really doing i like the all blacks team as well uh the new zealand all blacks yes. yeah they are good i do have a jersey from them well a warm-up shirt anyway but Special edition Safari since Dark Lag a little bit, bit uh, disappointing. I don't know, the Petrol one was pretty cool. I didn't get it, but it is pretty cool. I don't know why I didn't get it. Did I? No, I didn't get it. 
I just didn't. I don't know. You have the ink. Uh, I do have the ink. Yeah, it's true. Actually, I was looking at um, the Papier plumes that are for Chicago. If you're going to Chicago, there are um, some Papier plume inks. There is a dark blue and a sort of like a, I don't know, a really dark wine color. And the dark blue, it's called Da the Blue. Bears. Yeah, like Da Bears. Um, it's uh, kind of a, like it's, it leans green and it actually looks a little bit like petrol. I think it's a bit darker, but yeah. It's beer 30 yet? I've been drinking root beer, but I do have a beer sitting over here. Two black standard poodles, photo of black dogs it is, though. Oh, black dogs. You got Joe's vote. Scraggs, you're, you're pulling ahead. Joe's is back, Oh, man. Take a, somebody named Take a Snooze is voting for Scraggles. Are you sure that's not you, Audrey? No. Which, yes, I like Are you, that are you back, there, uh, back there tweeting? I'm about to go to, go to sleep. You're going to go to sleep? Heck yeah. All right. Now Friday. Buy the Ion instead. I like the Ion. Haven't seen the Japanese safaris. Yeah, what color is the Japanese safari? It's real cool, isn't it? Isn't it like yellow and black or something? I don't know. Somebody post what it is. I actually forget. I thought it was a... Or is it white? I, f I forget. Red clip? Is that a different thing? It might be white with a red clip. I don't know. I remember seeing it and going, oh, I wish I could have that. I, I want it now. It me up because I'm looking at your pens over there and one has a, I know. a red. <laughs> yeah, the orange and red one. Yeah, that's, that was a special edition. Uh, can I ask you in the audience a question? As a teacher, I correct a lot of exams and shuffle the papers, so I get a lot of smearing. Maybe recommend a drier red ink or a drier pen. It's white with red clip. Yeah, cool. That's what it is. White and red. You're right, Audrey. Um, yeah, I would go with probably either a drier red ink or a drier pen. My wife, oh, my wife, um, you don't use that. Uh, what am I trying to say? My mom grades pens are great. God damn. I mean, darn. Ooh. Uh, you really uncorked something, Audrey. So many swears. It's sailor <laughs> okay, time it's here. All it's all Audrey's time. Uh, yes, 4001 red would be a lot drier. Um, she swears by Kaveco's ruby red, mm -hmm. which is too dry for me, but I tend to just let it, um, I'll just let it dry if I have to. If I'm using a, a pen like that, it's wet. Mr. Nose, what are you doing? He's trying to get his white fur on my rickshaw bag now. That's, oh, he's, he's doing a good job. He is all over it, so that's awesome. Noodler's Nikita and a Safari. Yeah, Nikita's a good one. Yeah, yeah. No, I just see it like a... Look at steofolios.blogspot.com. Like a fine sailor or something. Yeah, something Maybe like that. Very fine mid. Yeah, something real dry would, would work. Uh, like those would be kind of good. There it is, Audrey. There's yeah. the white with the red clip. I want that. You need to figure out a way to, to order one of those, Audrey. Does... I don't know, man. I don't know how to use those sites. Audrey has figured out how to do that stuff. Yeah, I saw that, Joseph. Thank you. That's uh, that looks cool. Uh, yeah, I would buy one of those. I wish they would sell that here. I don't know why they don't. Speaking of colors, have you checked out the Sailor Pro Gear slate at Anderson Pens? I did see the video for it, um, and it actually inspired me to ink up my. Where is mine? I think it's in my bag, actually, that Mr. Nose is toying with. Um, I inked up my slate 1911. We'll have to see what the uh, what the pro gear goes for. Do they actually have them now, or is that just an announcement? I didn't even look. Now that I think about it, Scraggles, what are you doing? Um, I'm gonna do some web surfing. Uh, yeah, Nikita is a good red, and it is pretty dry. Definitely, it'll work out for you. Let's see, just ends. Maybe it's in here. Midori paper. Let's see. Actually, it's not that much of a markup on the uh, the pro gear. It is still pretty expensive at 288 for the standard Pro Gear. The Pro Gear Slim is a little under 200, so yeah, it's about a 40 dollar markup, right? Something like that. Six, eight, yeah, 44 dollars or something. Pre-sale on the website. Oh, I see. Huh. Looks like it's in stock, but I haven't clicked on the actual thing. Oh, pre-order today. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I like them, but those are that's a pretty good markup. I've only got one Pro Gear, and I actually don't use it all that much um, compared to my 1911s, but um, they're good. And that color is great. Let me put the dog down, and I will see if I can grab my slate blue. Poor Scraggles. There's Scraggles. She doesn't love being picked up anyway. There it is. Excuse me, Scraggles. I think what she wants is this cheese that's sitting over here. Um. Cheese. I say sailor time. Yeah. So this is what the slate blue looks like. It looks much more blue on my screen than it does in real yeah, life. It really does. Let's see. What it looks like over here the live one. It's much more gray. 
Yeah, it's more gray in real life than it is on my screen here. For whatever reason, this is this screen is really picking up the blue and giving you more blue. But I don't know, lighten up that blue by about two shades and you'll be okay. But yeah, it is really nice. Uh, I mean, they don't have them now, but they will. Why don't I use my Pro Gear? Uh, you know what? I don't know, honestly. I do use it a fair amount, but I don't know. I think it might be just that... It's right here. It might actually be that it's black and it's hiding in a black case. And so I don't think about it as much. Whenever I think about it, I'm like, oh, yeah, shit, I gotta use my, shoot, I got to use my Pro Gear. Um, but it writes great. I do wish that they had gone with the tricolor nib. That nib is a real winner. But um, I think these are usually like 264 265 um, street price. So the 288 is a bit of a markup. I don't know if I can, I don't know if I can do it, but maybe. 1911 large fresca. Yeah, it's great. What ink is in my slate 1911? Um, you know what? I inked it up yesterday and I've already forgotten what I put in it. Let's see. Um, oh, I put melon tea in there, actually. I put in um, that Robert Oster melon tea that I just had up. So that's what's in it. I don't think I've used it. I only inked it up yesterday after I saw the video and then I went to school all day. And so I didn't, uh, I never used it actually at school. I got I need more desk. I have too many things on my desk. Oof. Uh, it's got a sailor pro color. I cannot say that, but I believe you. Um, I'm not, are the pro color ones, the pro gear slim or is that the, the steel, um, steel nib version? Thinking of buying a Twisby Vac Mini with an extra fine fine nib should be a bit drier, right? Yes, probably. Thanks for your recommendations. Yeah, I don't really know. Um, but yeah, they should be a little bit drier. They always seem drier to me. You already have one slate, do you really need two? Maybe. I mean, you probably ought to have the matching set, right? Uh, what Sailor nibs do I love? Um, I like the Sailor uh, Broad nibs the best. S medium is pretty okay, but anything smaller than medium is too small for me. Uh, Pro Color is... I really like the medium fine. Yeah, you, most of yours are medium fines, aren't they? Mm -hmm. um, how are Sailor nibs compared to Platinum? The Purple Cosmos is on sale in the UK. And it looks pretty tempting. Audrey's got a Purple Cosmos. That's that one that uh, Mandy gave you. Um, it's real cool looking. Uh, I haven't used that one, but it does look pretty good. You can have it then. I don't have it. You have it. I need my phone cases. Nope. They put them back in your suitcase when I came home, remember? You've got your pen cases, not me. Mm. Yeah, Sailor nibs are quite a bit different, I think, from the uh, the Platinum nibs, but I couldn't exactly tell you how, if I'm honest. Just they do feel different, for sure. Um, do both of them have that weird shape on the broad? It's not the broads, it's the mediums. Really? It's medium? Yeah, and I think that, no, it's the uh, it's the mediums that have that weird shape. And I think that might only be the 1911. The 1911 medium nibs have like kind of an oddly, like an oddly sharp tipping yeah. shape to them, which I hear is really good for writing in actual, actual Japanese. But to me, it makes it drag a little bit. And I don't like it as much. I usually, I'll get Audrey or Jim to smooth it out a little bit for me. Um, let's see, less feedback, less feedback on the one which ones i don't really feel feedback too much on either one if you go well i go big so it's not as much of a problem um tell me kai is a clear demo version oh interesting yeah 55 bucks is not bad for a sailor i like it yeah and the finer nibs right yep um the finest i go in uh platinum is also medium so and that'll tell you something about my Japanese nib choices. This Shungyo is a medium. Oh, you know what? I did get another pen, and I haven't had a chance to open it up yet. Because I was going to do it as a, um, as a like an un unboxing sort of thing, but I did actually open the envelope. Um, this is a pen that I got from Gold Spot Pens. They sent it out to review. It is a platinum. I got this, I want to say yesterday? Oh, really? Yeah, I forgot to tell even Audrey about it. Well, I'd been at school all day. I was tired. Um, so... Uh, this is the this is a platinum they sent out for review. Pretty psyched about that. This is oh, there's a bunch of platinum stuff in here. Well, there's a little card. That's fun, huh? So that's what they do. Some platinum is uh, limited editions. They will actually put the number on the pen. So this one right here is number thirty-seven forty-five out of thirty-seven seventy-six. So almost the end of the run. Um, and then some of them they put on a little card. So this is number two one one eight out of three thousand. I guess the first 3,000 or something get a special card. Huh. 
That's a really interesting card there. All right. I have a fountain pen warranty card. I have a user manual. And then here's the pen. Oh, it came with a converter. That's very nice of them. Yeah. Platinum converters are a little bit pricey and they don't always come with pens. Uh, there's the platinum converter and cartridge. Yeah. Platinum's probably got the best of the Japanese converters. Um, and there it is. So this is the Platinum Oshino, which is a crystal clear demonstrator. Mm -hmm. Like, very, very clear, just like this uh, Italian ice. No purple sheen, but it's nice. You get the little mountaintop, like chrome mountaintop they've got built in up here, which is nice. Very nice cap band. That's the same cap band they have on the Shengyao. It is different from all the rest. Where are the rest of them? Yeah, well, I don't have those to show off, so I can't tell. Oh. I don't actually know. Oh. Why am I pink if I knew where my pens are? <laughs> well, let's you find your pens. Um, okay. Alright, so there's that. And then this nib is a broad, which is great for me. I really like their broad. It's a good, good size. Uh, and these pens are great because they do not dry out. Um, I was having a little bit of an issue in this one with this um, Kayo Nooto. Nera Biro, I don't even know how to say that one exactly, which is like a sheeny black, like a copper sheen laying on top of their bronze sheen or something. Super neat on the coloring card. Uh, but yeah, so I'm always psyched to review that. Uh, it's got a nice feel to it. It doesn't have the rough um, outside like the uh, the Nice Pure does, or the Nice, which I know some people are against, but I actually kind of like the feeling. This feels really nice too. It's got a lot of weight to it, it feels like too. So, neato. I'll be looking forward to that. Looking forward to the, seeing that on the channel. It'll be there eventually. Eventually. Put all this stuff back in here. Uh, let's see. Oh, man. Uh, they have a blotter. Oh, yeah, it is like a blotter. Oh, they got a blotter with the number on the, li uh, the Lilis. Lilis. Uh, did you get the purple one or the pink one, Audrey? Pink. What's that one called? Is that the Lilis? I think that's the Lilis. And the Lavanda or something is the... Um, nice is the model, oh. and then there's like a nice. color. So like Nice Pure is the silver, and the Nice has got the gold, etc. And the lavender is just lavender. Like it's, lavende. Yeah, something like that. I think that's the Lilas. I think that's the one you oh, have. Maybe it is Lilas. Yeah, that's not right. <laughs> you got the UEF nib? Yeah, the new UEF nib is unwritably small. I couldn't even, couldn't even do anything with that. End of the work day. I have to play with the baby. All right, say hi to the, the, the wife and kid for us, Joseph. We'll see you later. Wish Platinum offered soft nibs more often. Yeah, the soft nibs are hard to come by. That is true. I like the cartridge because it has the ball in it. Yeah, it's got a nice cartridge, actually. They carry a fair amount of ink in those cartridges, too. Platinum does do uh, soft medium, I believe. It's not just Nakaya, but they are hard to get, or get. They're pretty rare. I don't know why. First time catching a live show. Hey, welcome, Daniel from Houston. Hey, all right. Shout out to Mike for helping you get a deal on a vintage pen at the Dallas Pen Show. Oh, um, okay. Yeah, no, I know who you are now. <laughs> you have a tiny little picture out here on my other um, my other uh, screen. Yeah, cool. Welcome to the live show, man. Um, yeah, yeah. H-Town, my old stomping grounds. They did offer an SM with one of the 3776s. I didn't get that one. Well, fair enough. GDEP going to bed, huh? Cool. Cool, cool. You're welcome for the ink advice. Pink is Lilas. Cool. Thanks, Angel. All right. All right. What else do I have? The other thing I have is this big pile of paper over here. Um, I did buy some of it. Uh, I'm going to sleep. You're going to sleep? I'm going to sleep. All right. Enjoy your nap. Oh, I will. What time do you want me to wake you up for pizza? Uh, 10 o'clock. 9 o'clock? <laughs> no, I don't care. Whatever. All right. All right. A double broad, huh? Yeah, nice. She's waving. She's going to take a nap, so. Nap time. Mm -hmm. uh, so the first thing I got is this giant uh, Mnemosyne pad. This is a big notebook. Uh, what size is it? It actually doesn't have a size on it. This is like 15 bucks, uh, but I do really like the paper in these guys. They are excellent for fountain pens. I have some notes and stuff I was scribbling on there. And uh, you can see on the back, you can see some show through because of the window behind it. It's folded over. A little bit of show through, but no bleed or anything. This is all fountain pen stuff, so uh, very nice. I like the way they section. Uh, they sort of have these heavy lines. There we go. Maybe you can see better here. 
these sort of heavy lines in here to break out sections. That's pretty good. Uh, so with broad, you need to use good paper all the time to avoid bleed through. Uh, the broad on platinum is not particularly broad, so no. Um, I use it with all kinds of paper. Uh, but that's, um, uh, I mean, more than like the medium, I guess, but not too bad. Uh, they're not particularly wet. Or, I mean, yeah, not particularly wet and not particularly broad. It's a Japanese broad, so not that much. Uh, what's my opinion on Tomoe River paper? Um, I like it okay. Uh, I really like it in stuff, but um, you don't like bleed through, but you like ghosting. Well, if you like ghosting, Tomoe River is your is your uh, your paper. Because, man, it ghosts for sure. I have a pad. Or I have a, a bunch of loose sheets over here. I have it in my, um, my Hobonichi. Uh, and I've got it in this next thing that I was going to show. Um, which is, if I can actually pick it up. I finally got my Hippo Noto. It, uh, my first one was destroyed in transit. Um, this is the Hippo Noto. This is the green. Um, this is ivory paper. And this is a heavy... Uh, oh, this dot pad is what I got, as I had forgotten. This is a much heavier Tomoe River paper, which is kind of nice. The regular one feels too skinny. Um, like it's a very, very, very thin paper, and it always feels like it's going to crinkle. I have terrible problems with it crinkling, and I hate that. So my only quibble about Tomoe River paper is the crinkliness. I like it in a book. I don't really like it loose leaf. So, you know, there's that. But it is very good paper. Um, I'm really going to enjoy this um, this extra thick Tomoe River in this Hippo Noto. I went for the green cover. You got some extras. I got a little, this is a blotter page, and there's a little stick-in pen loop guy. Um, and then this is a, um, uh, like a, you can put your hand on top of it, you can put it on the other side of the paper to give you something harder to write on so it won't like dent the next page. Um, so yeah, all kinds of extras with this little Hippo Noto. It did take about a year for these to get here. I think I signed up for them like the end or the beginning of last April or the beginning of last March. So it's been like a year, but they were held up in customs. There were manufacturing difficulties. If I had gone for the um, the other paper, the cream instead of the ivory, I would have had it months and months ago. Uh, but I held out for the ivory because it's going to look better with inks for this channel. So that's why I'm, I held out. Anyway, so Hippo Noto, I'm pretty psyched about that. This is a very nice quality notebook. Um, the cover feels awesome. Uh, is the Hippo an A5? It's like a short A5. It's a little bit smaller than A5, I think. Uh, it's not quite a standard size. Not quite. Uh, I get the spring edition Hobonichi because the Hippo is really expensive to import. Yeah, yeah, it would be. Shipping on paper is always expensive. getting soda stuck in my mustache uh, i'm gonna say that a pelican fine is probably broader than a platinum broad i mean they're probably on par the pelican fine though is not a fine by any stretch of the imagination it's huge moleskin planner has crappy paper with my double broad nib from pelican it only shows through well that's nice um, i had a moleskin planner a couple of years ago and it worked kind of okay um, i had to use very fine nibs or gel pens or something so that's the way it went you got damaged in shipping too. Ah, oh, it sucks, Angel. H hate to hear that. Hippo uh, was Hippo Noto not the Kickstarter done in the U.S.? Yeah, it was. It was. Uh, but she did two different color options. She originally was just going to do a cream, uh, and then someone was like, "Oh, can you get an ivory?" And she found an ivory paper, but it got uh, there were mistakes from the factory, and she had to find another supplier, and then they was held up in customs for like two months or something. It's it was a whole mess. So. I don't know, maybe she regrets making the uh, the ivory one at all. I don't actually don't know, but it has been a big holdup for her. Um, mine was not just damaged in transit. I got just an empty box, um, and it was a crushed, wet, destroyed, empty box. It, by the time it got here, it was nothing. Slim A5. Yeah, there we go. Got the black one with ivory. Nice, nice. I've seen a couple of those, and they look really cool. I think I'm gonna put a big sticker on the front of mine or something. I don't know. We'll see how it goes. What are your favorite, some of your favorite Montegrappa pens? I probably need to add an Italian pen to your collection. Um, for me, the Montegrappa ones I like the best are the Fortuna. Um, and I would go with one of the ones that has the new Yovo nibs on them because the new Yovo nibs, I think, are much better than the old Bach nibs. So that means right now you'd have to go for the like the Fortuna... Uh, shoot, what's the burned one called? Um, Reentry? No, that's the Caveco. Um, crud, it's escaping me at the moment, but it's the... Um, 
it's like a, one of the it's a metal fortuna that they've like heat treated so it's absolutely beautiful and there's another cup copper mule the copper mule is cool but it's not that one um the copper mule still has the old nib over the next year or so though they're going to be a blazer that's what it's called the blazer yep yeah, check out the Fortuna Blazer. And there's one other, I think the Camouflage one, which I don't really love. I, I mean, it's, it's fine, but the camo isn't really my look. Uh, Montegrafa, Montegrafa. <laughs> uh, Fortuna de Muertos. I don't know if I've seen the Fortuna de Muertos, but the Montegrafa, Montegrafa is actually kind of nice. And the, the, the Blazer is gorgeous. Um, that might be the next one I get. Visconti has new nibs too? Is that right? I don't know. I haven't heard that. I do know uh, that Fisconti is getting their nibs tuned up by a well-known nibmeister. I'm not 100% sure if I'm supposed to say who it is, but it is somebody who does a great job on nibs. So that's pretty good. Um, so uh, yeah, maybe we can start buying Visconti pens with uh, um, uh, Visconti pens with good nibs. They get sent to him. He's like, oh, yeah, they're really jacked up when I get them. He showed me some pictures, and they're terrible. So I actually still have the envelope for mine. Leave me a second, and I'll grab it. No, the Fortuna Happy Skulls one is a different one. This is my box. This is all I got. <laughs> uh, cover this. It has a nice sticker on it that says received, crushed, uh, unsealed, everything missing. The only thing that made it was the was the packing slip. That's literally all that's in this box. So, um, yeah, I win at USPS annihilating packages, I think. Hooray for me. I'm so glad I won that prize. But uh, I thought just the EF and F nibs. Um, no. Well, I don't know about the Visconti guy. I know who the, the nib tuner is, but he's doing mostly the bigger nibs, especially palladiums and that kind of stuff. Well, Visconti has not gotten their shit together, actually. Um, it's Coles of London that's getting their shit together, and they are taking the nibs out of pens and sending them to a nibmeister to be adjusted before they sell the pens, which is not Visconti getting it better. That is, um, that is Coles of London getting it better, so that's good. Um, he's crushed and tough. He's really got waterlogged a bit in the white case, but it's doable, especially after the weight. Yeah, it sucks. I hope the, the damage, or the, um, the notebook actually wasn't too damaged. Although, if you contact, um, Hippo Noto, they might, they might be able to hook you up with a new one. I mean, I don't know. And actually, my mail person is great. I really like our mail carrier. This was wet, and it's not, it wasn't raining where we were. So uh, it was crushed and mangled well before it got to me and my mail carrier. So I don't know. Who knows? Uh, the one with all the skulls on it is cool, but was the message written with the Hippo ink? That would, oh, that would piss me off, but no, it wasn't. I don't think so. Um, I bought this. I bought this hippo. Uh, this hippo noto um, Hawaii blue. I bought it at the bar actually. So um, I don't know if there was going to be a bottle in there or not. She did send me a bottle of the original, like um, the the hippo purple um, from Robert Oster, and it was great. But you know, our retailer says it to uh, says it to me, and I try the old and the new. The new ones are really soft. Oh, from Visconti. Yeah, interesting. I I don't know. I hadn't heard about it. Pull the trigger on the Starry Night because the nib is awesome. Starry Night. Cool. Might buy the Montegrafa Beauty Book, gentlemen, since Jerry Lux is having a sale on it. I don't know what that one is. It's, is that a is that an autocorrect or is that a just a model I haven't heard of? Regarding Visconti, I think they start with an, uh, the F extra fine and fine, and they'll do the broader nibs later. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. I haven't heard that. Um, I should have. I I'll talk to him in Chicago. I'm sure they'll be there. Um, they have a new uh, new guy. Uh, I don't know his name, but I did. I talked to him a bunch in Atlanta, but I didn't ask about the nibs. I don't know. I would say still for a little while, like buy with caution. But also, hey, maybe things you're looking up. That's kind of good. Hippo ink, uh, hippo noto ink is back on order. It will ship later. Good. Is that the uh, the hippo purple? Because hippo purple is real cool. It's one of my go-to's actually. I've had it. I don't think I've gotten any pens right now, but I've had it in pens constantly since I've gotten that one, pretty much. Hmm. Here I was saying I wasn't going to be on the stream long. It's been an hour and 15 minutes. I haven't actually even shown you all the things I got. So let me show a couple more things. This is one I've heard a lot about, but I haven't tried myself. This is the Clairefontaine Flying Spirit. Um, which is a uh, 90 gram Clairefontaine paper. 
It's got uh, little balloons on the back. That's fun. Time to look at new cars. Ooh, look at you. Enjoy looking at new cars there, Sandra. Um, this is a very nice paper. It's kind of a cream paper um, with sort of grayish lines on it. Experiencing the world's best paper. So we'll see how it goes. Maybe it's the world's best paper. I don't know. That's the name of it. Oh, interesting. Some private major brain cancer charities. That sounds great. I don't know that one. I don't know that one at all. Crystal saw my pics of my hippo. I'm not too stressed about it too much. All right, good. All right, good. Yeah, Crystal is really nice. Um, I've, I've met her a couple of times now, and she's nice to hang out with. I really like Crystal. Um, she's going to be at the Chicago show now, it seems. So that's cool. Um, so it's the Flying Spirit. And then these two were given to me by for review by uh, Luxury Brands USA. Um, hope your friend finds a great car. Oh, it's not for you? Well, that's too bad. Um, and they are these two notebooks. These are a new brand of notebook to me. Apparently, they've been around for quite a while, uh, but I'd never heard of them. They are Stiff Flexibles. So you can go to stiffflexible.it. It's an Italian brand. I haven't opened up this sort of um, sugar skull looking guy yet, but I did open up this one, the Ride Hard Vintage Car Racing Brooklyn. This is not one I would have necessarily picked, but it is the one they wanted me to do a review for, so I'll show that. Um, it has a flexible cover on both sides. It's got these like little cutouts and it'll flex. You can kind of bend it. So you can like, I guess, flip through it more easily or something like that or, or hold it more easily. And it's pretty nice paper. These are lined. Or at least this one is. What's this one? Does it even say? Um... No, oh, it doesn't say. This is 80 gram ivory paper. It doesn't say whether it's uh, lined or whatever. Maybe they just all are. That's entirely possible. Uh, but it's very nice paper. I was doing some some stuff over here. I was making notes. It's got different kinds of paper in it or different kinds of um, pagination in it. So this says uh, <laughs> post IT. I'm not sure why that is, but um, it's got uh, these are these are actually perfed. So you can tear out these graph pages, which is nice. What else do they have in here? There's some blank pages. If you're into blank, um, yeah, it just says blank. It just says post it. I'm not sure why. I do like that it's got some perfect pages. These are just notes for uh, a video that I was going to make for the um, Atlanta show. We'll see if I get to it. It ghosts because it's fairly thin and there's just white paper behind it, but it doesn't bleed at all. Uh, what, have I, what was I using here? Um, I have a little bit of feathering maybe, but that's I think because of the ink I was using here. But these are both uh, really wet um, medium nibs, so seems good. Seems like it's gonna be nice paper. I'm looking forward to it. It's got a nice elastic to it. It's got this little thing in the back that you can use as a bookmark. So if I wanna mark a page, just kind of fold it in. And there you go, and you can go right to it. That's pretty convenient and nice. Now these seem like very well-constructed books. I'm looking forward to them, so. Get some stuff out of here. There we go. Uh, let's see. That Sugar Skull one. Yeah, they have, there are so many cool designs. Definitely check these out. If you are um, in Europe, you could probably just go to the Italian site for these, which is right there. Stiffflexible.it. There we go. Um, and there are a zillion designs. This Sugar Skull one is very cool, but they're like superhero ones. Like there's one that's like a big, it's about a, a half a half a shield of like Captain America. It looks pretty dope. Um, but uh, I'll have a review on these um, in the near future. Um, is Conway Stewart still in business? Um, I think the answer to that is kind of. Um, I think they're making Conway Stewart pens again, but I don't know. I don't know who owns the brand. Um, I think it might be a brand that got passed off to somebody, but I don't know who owns it. I, for I forget it's off the top of my head. But they are still around, I believe. I only have one Conway Stewart, and it's this one. And man, I love this pen. It makes me want to buy more Conway Stewarts, but Conway Stewarts are expensive if you don't get them at an auction or something. Uh, I got this one at an auction, and I'm pretty psyched about it. But this one has a factory italic nib, and it's fantastic. So, um, yeah, if you have a chance to get some Conway Stewarts, do it. British Bespoke Pens. Is that who's doing them now? I don't know. I would believe you if you told me that, though. So, um, that was our haul from Atlanta. It ended up, like, I didn't buy anything until Saturday sometime, and then apparently I kind of got a lot of stuff. Um, some of this, though, was given to me as review stuff. Some of it is, you know, 
ink, which isn't too expensive. Some of it's paper, which turns out to be a little expensive, but that's the way it goes. That's the way it goes at pen shows. We'll see how Chicago does. Uh, I'm, I'm not really planning to buy anything, but you never know what you're going to find at these shows. Uh, I won't be working. I'll be wandering around. So uh, do f- please feel free to come and like find me if you're there. Uh, again, if you're at Chicago, check out uh, this right here. Uh, if you want to be a volunteer for the PIF table, um, Pay It Forward, if you don't know, is a... Um, <laughs> Good, good, Stephanie. Uh, Pay It Forward, if you don't know, is a um, uh, is a project that was started by uh, my friend Oscar, who got the idea from, I want to say, Rachel Goulet uh, off the top of my head. Um, there was a big Kickstarter for it a little while ago, and the idea is that he wants to be, make pens and inks and decent paper available to, like, kids and people who are just starting out so you can we hand out like bags of stuff we have like a take it and leave it sort of uh bin that you can bring stuff that you're not using and leave it there and take stuff that other people aren't using it's pretty great um i see it says luxury brands is a usa distributor of stiff flexible notebooks that's true they are they do um, stiff flexible notebooks they do platinum and they do uh noodlers that's the those are the they are the distributors for those brands so um, let's see. Have I ever had the furniture of a pen replated? I have not. No, it sounds like it'd be a huge pain in the butt, but I have not done it. So I don't know. Yeah. It was from Rachel Goulet's idea. Yeah. Oscar is one of these guys that like takes an idea that somebody just mentions in passing. It was like, Hey, it'd be cool if there was a thing like this. And he'd be like, yep. And now I'm doing that thing. And so he's, he's like, he's juggling a lot of things at the moment. So it's really good that people want to, you know, help out and be uh, volunteers at the piff table. You need to get your Moblog 145 since replay this. It's got a little carrier with a jeweler's rude. Co- Oof. Yikes, man. That sounds bad. Um, it shouldn't be too hard to do. I think you can take those apart pretty well. And um, jewelers know what they're doing, so you can do it. FP Nibs will replate furniture. Cool. I'm not sure that Laverty is in the U.S. I'm sure there are some European people that do it, too. Maybe just a jeweler could do it. I actually don't know. But no, I've never had it done, so I can't give you more information. I don't know. All right. It has been uh, an hour and 25 minutes, give or take. Um, Thank you very much for hanging out with me. I appreciate you showing up uh, on a Friday afternoon to help ring in the weekend with me. Um, That is always fun. I'm glad y'all show up for that sort of thing. I will be here next week. Um, I will have, I will try to, FP News is based in Spain. No kidding? Well, you learn something every day. I didn't know they were based in Spain. I thought they were in California or something. Anyway, so... Cool. There you go. There was some dude who replayed it at 823. All right. I believe you. Huh. I did not know they were in Spain. I really thought they were in like California. Oh, whatever, man. Oh, um, let's see. At shows, are there people who will fix snorkels? I don't know if anybody fixes snorkels at shows. There are people at shows who will fix snorkels, but generally they will take them home. Um, because snorkels are like several different kinds, and it can be a pain in the butt to fix. And so a lot of times they'll take it home and then ship it back to you. But um, there definitely are people at shows who fix snorkels. Enjoy your pizza. Have a good weekend. Thanks, Michael. I will do my best. Um, Let Audrey take a nap for a few hours. I will probably do some yard work, maybe. Maybe I'll I'll finish writing my pen review. I don't know. I got a lot of stuff here. But anyway, thank you again for hanging out with me. Uh, And until next time, um, spay new to your pets. Think about what you put out in the world. Make it a better place. um, And uh, all the other things. Be good to people. I'll see you later. Peace out.